Many people have recommended that we tour a Bayliner 4788 motor yacht as a possible live aboard, and recently we had a random opportunity to do so. Armed with our camera phones and the broker, we headed off to Fisherman's Terminal. We weren't really prepared to capture the tour like we normally do. However, it was great to finally get on board the 4788, and the motor yacht did not disappoint. We hope to do a more in-depth tour of the 4788 in the future. Fisherman's Terminal is operated by the Port of Seattle and is located on the Washington Ship Canal. Home to the North Pacific Fishing Fleet, it is open to the public and has several restaurants and shops. It serves both private and commercial sailing and motor vessels. And if you're lucky, you may even catch a glimpse of some of your favorite crabbers. In 1988, the Seattle Fisherman's Memorial was dedicated to the memory of all the Seattle area men and women who have lost their lives pursuing their livelihood. Names of the fishers who were killed in fishing related accidents are listed by the decade on the stone slabs to the right and the left of the statue. This monument has provided their memory a residence, a site for family and friends to visit, to place flowers, and to reflect and to heal. I'm Scott and this is Allie, and we live in Seattle. Over the last several years, we've owned and operated two boats in the Pacific Northwest. And now we're on our search for a liveaboard cruiser. So hit the subscribe button now to come along with us on our boating journey and see where it leads. Boarding the boat, the cockpit features a new sea deck floor, a ladder up to the flybridge, and a custom hatch to keep the elements out of the fully enclosable space. The owners added the blue rope lighting to help locate the boat at anchor when returning to her after dark. Upon entering the large salon, you are greeted by all new carpet, two armchairs to port, and a large L-shaped sofa to starboard. The galley had similar equipment to our Bayliner 4087. It had a lot of counter space. It did have two sinks that were pretty deep, including the one main one that you could put a pan in. It also had a princess stove and oven, has a large microwave, and it has a trash compactor. It had plenty of storage, and another thing it has as an upgrade is a sea freeze refrigerator, which gets much colder than your typical boat refrigerators. One thing we were always curious about on the 4788 is why it would have a wet bar directly across from the galley. It turns out it actually has a built-in blender and ice maker perfect for whipping up your favorite frozen drinks while entertaining at the dock or on the hook. Along with the hidden TV and automatic shades, this salon is really ready for a party. The lower helm station offered a complete set of upgraded electronics and a comfortable settee behind the upgraded captain's chair and doors to access the bow on both the port and starboard sides. Heading up to the flybridge, the helm offers plenty of good sight lines and all the necessary controls, including side power, bow, and stern thrusters. There is ample seating, but no good place for a table. There is a barbecue and refrigerator outside. Unfortunately, it was covered today because of the rain. And a robust steelhead 1,000 pound davit system. One thing you'll notice right away is on the electrical panel, the owner had put tags on each fuse of which to leave on. That's a great idea. Never thought about doing that, and we're gonna do that on the next one. Heading down to the cabins, the day head had plenty of space, but it had a really large lip going into the head, which could easily be tripped on if you're me. The day head did have a separate shower versus having a wet head. That's another must for us for any liveaboard. The first guest cabin is set up great. Unlike many guest cabins, the bed is not on the ground floor, making it much easy to get in and out of. This room also offered plenty of storage space. There is a washer dryer combo 
located in the hallway, and it looked actually to be fairly new. Washer dryer is another must for us on a liveaboard. The master stateroom is actually a V berth, and the bed is not a full walk around. That is a little bit of a deal breaker for me. These motor yachts were also built with partitions between the staterooms that could be easily removed. That's what this owner did between the bunk room and the master. He replaced it with a curtain to offer privacy for when they do have guests. But most of the time they use the bunks for storage and the top bunk can be lowered to help make a day lounge out of it as well. The master also had plenty of storage. We were surprised by all of the drawers and closets. So that would make it a great liveaboard. It's just I needed the bed to be a walk around. The master head offered plenty of space and we were shocked to see that the shower is actually a bathtub. Imagine how much water that takes. I'd probably kill myself trying to get in and out of the thing. Well, that wasn't our usual video of a tour that we normally do. And that's mainly because it was very impromptu. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually were out to lunch. We got a phone call. Hey, we've got a 4788. You want to look at it? And we ran straight to the marina. So we didn't have our usual camera equipment. We just had our phones. Um, but it was still fun to take a tour of it. Finally, we've had so many people yeah. that have said, you got to go check out the 4788. And we did. Um, I was expecting it to look like our 4087. And but bigger. But bigger. You know, if, you, if you've ever been on the 3587, it looks exactly like our 4087, but just shorter. And I was uh, surprised in many ways. First of all, it had fantastic upgrades. Oh, yeah. The, the current owners, they have just replaced the new, uh, put in new carpeting. Uh, forward and rear facing cameras, computer navigation. All new upholstery. All new upholstery, upgraded autopilot. Uh, electric shades. Electric shades, captain's chairs on upper and lower helms. Refinish the woodwork, I don't mention that. Oh, refinish the woodwork. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was set. I mean, it was really nice. He's And they've taken really good care of it. Um, it's only the second owner that owns this. Um, what I was surprised about was it didn't look like our boat. So right. um, there are a few things, you know, so people are asking us, so is it it? Is it the liveaboard? And unfortunately, it's not. And yeah, at least not for us. Yeah, and we'll give you a reason why. You know, it was a fantastic cruiser. If, if we weren't looking for a liveaboard, I think that oh, yeah. is the boat for the San Juans, Absolutely. for exploring the Puget Sound. Why is it not the boat for us? Well... Uh, there are four things that I absolutely have to have, um, and they're not anything major, but mm -hmm. the first is I want a fairly decent galley. Um, and I thought this one had a decent galley. It not had too a, bad. We could take out the trash compactor, put yeah. in more shelving there. It had a sea um, freeze for refrigerator, yep. which is fantastic. Big sink. Had a big sink. So it had everything in there. What it didn't have was a dinette set. Right. And you know me, I like Or to, even a bar. It didn't, didn't even have a bar you could sit at. So I like to entertain and, and um, you know, make cocktails and make dinner for people. So it didn't have that, which mm -hmm. was a bummer. And on top of that, it didn't have anywhere you could sit outside and eat. Right. And that's another big thing. We like to have cocktails again. Okay, wait, we've got a drinking problem. But we like to have cocktails. and I see a theme and, going here. And... Uh, Serve appetizers and the cockpit was way too uh, yeah, shallow. Yeah, very shallow, very shallow. And, that's, and upstairs there was again no table. And again, this is one of the reasons we got, we sold, not got rid of, but we sold the 4087. Mm -hmm. We want outdoor space to be able to entertain. Um, and I think the other big one for me, as everyone knows, is I'm a little spoiled, but I want to walk around bed. After right. having an aft cabin master stateroom, I am in love with that style. I don't want to have to hop into bed. Um, and that's just me, you know, if I, you know, it's just my preference. And mm -hmm. then I was surprised that this was a V berth. Yeah, um, me too. It had tons of storage though. For a master stateroom, that room had gobs of storage. They had converted, they took out the partition um, and right. which allowed you to separate, which is very easy to do on these. And he put in a tract for a curtain that then separated the double bunks 
and he uses that for storage. You can mm -hmm. also lower one of the top bunk and make it a like a couch, a day bed. Yeah, it almost doubled the size of the, the master couch. Yeah, and the master uh, head actually had a bathtub, which I don't know that I would ever take a tub because you'd use all that right. water. Right. But Especially when you don't have a water maker. Yeah. Um, so those are the big ones for us. Mm -hmm. So we'll just keep on looking. Keep what on else looking. can we do? Yeah. So... So stay tuned next week. We've had a lot of people ask us, what is your plan? You know, your boating journey, you're looking for a liveaboard. Hey, here's the, here's the fact. If we can find a boat that is in a liveaboard slip that we like, mm -hmm. bingo, we got it. Right. Um, and it may not be here in the Northwest. I mean, we're gonna just keep looking. That's what we, um, is, that's our goal, right? right? So next week, we're gonna sit down with you, tell you a little bit about what our plan is, what we've got planned. We have some fun boating things scheduled this year, um, and we're excited to share those with you. And we do have some more boat tours as well, because we need to explore and figure out what's out there. Right. So we'll see. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave your comments down below. More importantly, Hit be sure subscribe to subscribe button. button and ring the bell so that you get notified on the next episode. We really appreciate you following us. It means the world to us. So thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll see you next week. See you guys.